Hello and welcome back. We will be learning a little bit more about prompt design. We're back in the GPT-3 playground. We're fully aware of all of our parameters and everything that we can do here. Let's take a spin and see what we can do. So a really popular usage of GPT-3 is for creative tasks. You know, humans are awesomely creative, of course, but it's nice to have a little bit of help from the AI now and again. So uh, maybe we're sitting at home and we're thinking of uh, a way we could contribute to the community or use our time or make a little bit of money. So maybe we can ask GPT-3. So we can tell it to come up with uh, ideas for a business that I can start pretty quickly and cheaply. And there it goes, is generating some reasonable ideas. And this is actually what we call zero shot prompting. So we just told it what to do. We didn't give it a single example. We just said, hey, do this. And it, it came up with, uh, I believe, six uh, ideas. We could probably have gotten more if we had increased the maximum length. Pet sitting, social media, cleaning, tutoring. These are you know, decent ideas, it did a pretty good job. So yeah, tons of creative uses for GPT-3 that are already going on. Tons of writers and musicians and marketers are already using this technology to help them uh, get started being creative. But we can also do something called a few shot prompting where we tell GPT-3 what to do and then we also give them a bit of an example. So something like, you are, let's get rid of this. You are a baker's assistant. Uh, you know everything there is to know about baking and you're happy to share your knowledge with folks in the kitchen. Example user, so we'll call them a, a baker. Uh-oh, I burnt this brownie and it's now stuck to the bottom of the pan. What can I do? Baker's assistant. You can try scraping uh, with a butter knife and turning the pan upside down. In future, maybe try a lower temperature. Okay, so we've given it one example. We could give it another example, or we can just try to continue. So let's see if uh, we can get GPT-3 to continue on. You'll notice that I'm using kind of a structured example header. GPT-3 responds really well to this type of structured formatting, which makes it really good for uh, development because if you want to, you can force GPT-3 to answer in JSON or as a CSV or in HTML. It's really receptive to that as it's absorbed a lot of that kind of stuff into its data set. So let's, let's try another example, see how well GPT-3 can do. Another question from a baker, maybe what temperature should I set the oven on for a, uh, let's call it a honey cake? Baker's assistant. And we'll leave it up to GPT-3 to answer, hopefully. For a honey cake, you should set the oven temperature at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure to preheat the oven before you start baking. Awesome. So... You could imagine this might be useful as an app that you might find on your Alexa or your Google Home uh, in the kitchen. And this is exactly how you would train a model to do that kind of thing uh, for your app. You might set up your app where uh, when the user says, you know, hey, Google, I need help in with my baking. You'd collect what they say, feed it into the prompt, and then query GPT-3 with that. So you can actually view the code here. This is what you would send uh, into GPT-3 and you'd spit back as part of your application. So that can be a really awesome use case. You can imagine so many different ways to use this.
So this is a really good example of the kind of thing that you could use GPT-3 to do creatively, both either as a zero shot, like for the business ideas, or a few shot, uh, like what we're doing now, providing an example. The last major use case I want to show in this video is summarization, which GPT-3 is also really, really good at. So I have uh, some board meeting minutes here from the uh, Vancouver Parks Board. And, you know, I don't have time to, to read all that stuff, but I do want to know what the Parks Board plans on doing. I like to use the parks. I want to be a good citizen and keep abreast of these local politics so we can make GPT-3 help us. Something like, please summarize the following document highlight in particular the things that a normal citizen would find interesting please format the summary using bullet points to make it nice and easy to read okay paste that in there and let's see if gpt3 can can summarize it Okay, it, this looks great. I am saving a lot of time. Recommendations for modifications to the park. So-and-so was granted leave. There's some updates on urban forestry projects. All right, seems like I, need, I would need to actually read the meetings to, to judge this. And actually what we would really want to do is to have some people read the minutes and do some examples, maybe some few shot prompting, or maybe even fine tune a model that would be really good at summarizing. But for a zero shot, I think this did quite well. Okay, thanks for watching. I think we've gone through several really good examples of how we can use GPT-3, both in the playground and what it will look like to use GPT-3 with an API call. In the next video, we're going to show an example of how we can actually plug GPT-3 into a, a voice application and how that can be really powerful and, and fun to deploy in the real world. So I'll see you in the next video.